Hello and welcome. My name is Tyler Skitter and today I'm going to be showing you how to model this high poly X-Wing you can see right here. Okay, so this video series is going to contain some real-time and some time-lapse um, footage. I'll be doing all real-time the more complicated stuff, for example this air intake over here and the cockpit. Uh, what else? Um, this airplane nose, but all the complicated stuff that you might not know how to do. And then the rest will be time lapsed. But um, yeah, I won't time lapse it too fast so you can still see what I'm, how I'm modeling, and you can, should still be able to see the keys I'm pushing with screencast keys. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that's about it. In this first video, though, we won't model much. We'll just do this um, main body over here, this thing, and then uh, what else? Yeah, there's like a panel over here that goes sort of like this. Um, but, uh, stupid me, I forgot to mirror it on this rend, but we'll be modeling that in this video as well. And, um, yeah. If you have any idea of how to, I can improve my videos, I'd really like to, to hear it, so you can just tell me in the comments below. And if you have any questions regarding uh, this video, you can also ask and I'll do my best to answer. So, um, yeah. That's about it, and don't forget to check out my channel, I have some other um, interesting Blender videos. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this series, and thanks for watching. Okay, so with this new scene opened up in Blender, I'm just going to delete this default lamp and default uh, camera. We won't be needing those during this um, this tutorial series. Okay, but we can use this default cube to align our background images, which I have already done to save time. But you can do this just by, and these three images will be available at the link in the description below, so you can go ahead and get those. Um, this is the front view mode, right view mode, and top view mode. And you can just align these by adjusting the size, y-axis, and then x-axis. I'm sure you know how to do that, but um, very easy. Okay, so, yeah. As you can see, what you want to do is make sure that this default cube, that all three background images can fit into this default cube perfectly. Or at least close to perfect, it doesn't need to be exactly perfect, as you can see mine are not perfect, but they're close, and that's all you need alright, so yeah, now we can begin with modeling, first thing we're going to do is add an airplane alright, so before I actually begin modeling let's have a look at this rend I did this one here, and first Think about how we're going to um, stop modeling something like this. A lot of the time, people don't. Um, people will just begin modeling from their reference image, and this isn't the ideal way of doing things if you want a realistic model. Um, what you should always do before you begin modeling anything is look at how your geometry is going to flow on the object. And this is a very simple example, but if you're modeling something more complicated, it's uh, it's crucial. So. Let's begin over here, um, not much to be done here, as you can see it's very simple, we're going to have, we have three very flat surfaces, um, this, this one here, this one here, and this one here, so what we must do is make sure that none of our uh, geometry is, and we'll just make sure it's between these two points at all times, so it's, this, is gonna, this is a very important part, we must always make sure about that, and just, um, like I said, this is a very simple example, but you can see how our geometry is going to move over here. This is very important, if you, especially if you're modeling more complicated scenes. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, like I said, these three flat surfaces, it's important that we we don't adjust the geometry in between these two points. Okay, so let's uh, begin modeling with our uh, with our plane over here, and I went into edit mode over there to move it. That's important because we're going to be mirror mod we're going to be adding a mirror modifier, and as everyone knows, the mirror modifier will mirror your object um, in relation to its origin point on a one to one uh, scale. So, um, for instance, this is let's say this is positive on the x-axis. This is five. It's going to mirror to negative five with the zero, zero, zero being the origin point.
to have a mirror modifier now by going into this menu over here where the spanner is. That's the modifier menu. I'm going to add a modifier, mirror modifier, and then it's mirroring on the x axis, which is what we want. Then I'm going to select these center verts and then select clipping over here and push them together just like that. And you know, it's just there. They're not stuck, you can't pull them apart. As you can see, I do have a bit of a, um, it's it's doing this, as you can see, but a very slight angle over there. But we can use the ruler, hit spacebar and search ruler. You can use the ruler to make sure that our, because it's difficult to do that just with your eye, so adding a ruler here will give us a nice, nice line to measure this with. As you can see, that's pretty bad. There we go. Okay, so I think that's it for the the body. Um, oh yes, there's some um, air intake over here. We can model that now, and then let's also do this side panel over here, and we'll do the cockpit in one of the last stages. And this noise here will also do one of the, the later videos. Um, both are um, quite complicated, or a little more complicated. All right, so um, yeah, let's actually go ahead and add some holding edges. For those of you who don't know what a holding edge is, it's basically when you um, notice if I hit control number two to add in a subdivision, a subsurface modifier, the um, blender will subdivide between two, uh, between two points. Um, I'm really not explaining this nicely, but the more geometry you have, the more flat will be, of course. So we can use um, holding edges where we want on the edges we want uh, more sharp as you can see now this is we want this edge to be sharp for example and this one so we add two holding edges over here and then it's a lot sharp but we still have nice smoothness along the edges yeah we'll be using a lot of these throughout the series or a lot of these As you can see, that immediately looks so much nicer than what we had before. Any problem with using a subdivision surface? All this geometry can just get um get too much sometimes, and it makes it hard to see. But over here in the subdivision menu, you can just hit optimal display. Is that what's called optimal display mode? Optimal, yeah, just optimal display, and that'll only show you the important geometry. So yeah, I'm going to keep that on. And also, what I like to have on over here in display, not display, sorry, shading, ambient occlusion, this is a new feature with Blender 2.74, uh, I'm just going to keep this on while I model at about 0.5, and for those of you who don't know, ambient occlusion will give us a little bit of dirt in where two objects will meet, um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's add some holding edges over here. Of course, we can use mean creases, but I prefer to use holding edges because it'll it won't give us weird um, shadow things. Like there's more geometry if you can if you can spare it. It's, it's always better than using a mean crease. Okay, so let's begin with this over here. I'm gonna show you a real cool trick over here. I'm just going to 
um, box this in like this. As you can see, actually, let's put these a little farther apart. Um, double tapping G will um, slide it instead of moving it. As you can see, it's moving the sliding. I'm going to slide this over to there and slide this over to here. And that's fine. Okay, so this can get quite tricky. So let me try to do this without messing it up. I'm going to take these two. I'm going to hit E. And then I'm just going to slide down ever so slightly on the X, on the Z axis, and then on the Y axis, just so we have, as you can see, this, um, just so it looks like this. Yeah. This is going to, um, the reason why I only did it slightly was because, as you can see, if I do it more, then it starts to disrupt this geometry that we want to be um, linear. Okay. And of course, what we want to do instead is slide it. I'm going to slide this down all the way to here, where this intake is going to begin. Same with this. All the way to there. Same with this one. close enough that I can just flatten them out. You can see we see you can see we still have a very uh very flat surface. That's great, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so let's add some more geometry here to make it just a little that little bit more curved. Alright, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and select these faces over here. And then I'm going to go to the top view mode. Um, oh, these background images are slowing down my machine a bit. Recording and those high resolution background images are quite strenuous. So I'm going to extrude this just about there. Going into this front view, going to align them up again. Like so, G, Y over there. And then I'm going to rotate it from the top view. So it looks like that. As you can see, that looks terrible, but that's alright. Let's zoom in nice and close over here and get this nice and close just like that. Okay, so let's add some more geometry so we can have just two loop cuts over there, and of course we're gonna need some more here. And then some more here and here. There you go, that looks nice. That looks cool. Going into face select mode again, I'm going to just extrude this over here so it looks like it's going actually into the ship and to the engine or whatever this um, air intake is going to. And maybe we should add another loop cut over here to give that a little more width. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks nice. Right, now we just have to make model this uh, this plate over here. Uh, that'll be quite easy as well. Let's just add in a cube, and because we'll be mo we're modifying we're modifying this, we want it to want the origin point to be in the middle of our spaceship, of course. So I'm just gonna hit Shift C to throw my cursor back to the uh, center. Then we're going to shift C again, and then we're going to say uh, selection to cursor. Going into edit mode, and then we can model, we can move this to our, to our plate over here.
In case you're wondering what I'm using here, as you can see me flipping between menus very quickly, is the official Pi menus, which can be activated in user preferences. Where is it? There it is. And uh, search Pi, I should find it. There you go, official Pi menus. And this is just a quick way of switching between different modes, and um, I started using it and I really liked it. Um, it takes a while to get used to, but once you get used to it, you can well really go between modes fast. So it's it's worth um, worth learning. Okay, so that's it for this first video. Um, in the next few videos, we'll be doing more modeling than what we've done here. I just thought I'd make this one a little shorter than the rest. Um, but it's a big object, at least. So, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, if you like this series, and if you want to learn how to model um, this X-Wing in a high poly, then stick around, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.